All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do in this lecture, I'm going to show you how we actually edit profile, kind of like continuation of what we did before on the uh, authentication. So what we have, we have, uh, we have. I've created another page called profile, and this profile has just a label here uh, for validation, if you want. Uh, and then we have, we have in the code to protect that page, just like we did in the previous video, you check if you have a value from in the session. If the username is not available in the session, we direct them to, we direct the user to the uh, login page. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm gonna show you how we use, uh, how do we use uh, the, uh, the data source, and how do we use uh, custom query to edit uh, the user profile. So let's go ahead and go to the page profile. You can create one like I just did. You can just copy one of the pages that we did in the previous example and add it here. Now, if you look at the, uh, if you, we're gonna add a, a data source to this page. And this data source, I'm gonna configure it. You select the connection, click on next. And I'm gonna select the table, which is called user table. Now, in the past, we haven't used the where statement, but today I'm going to use the where statement to show you how we actually create a query with uh, a condition. So when you say where, and then here, the column that we are validating is the username. Now, the operator that we're going to use is equal. You can use all these different operators, but the one that we're using is equal. Now, this is important. Where is your data? source coming from? Where is your value, the field that you want to compare coming from? You can have different, because this is a website, you can have it coming from a different technologies, either from the a control, which is a, a, a something on the form, a cookie, where a cookie is stored on the client's uh, browser, uh, then a form, if you have a form here, a profile, a query string, or a session. Now the session is important. The session is, remember in the previous session, what we did is that we said that I'm gonna create a session, in the previous video we created a session and we stored the username in it. So you say I'm gonna check the session and the user name that I, I use in my session. So the field name that I use in my session. And the field name was actually username. So if I click on add, now hit OK. Now your SQL statement says select the value from this table, user table, where the username equal to username coming from the session. That guarantees that you're looking only at one record, the record that the user logged in with. So they cannot look at other records, they only can look at their own record. So the field name is, remember what was the field name? It's called username. So if you wanna, if you click on it again, here it is. It was, remember it was, it was coming from the session and the session is called username. To guarantee that, I mean, to make sure that you get it correctly, all you do is that, okay, click on next. And then, uh, no, we need to do something else before we do that. Then we need to do advance because we want to be able to generate, insert, update, and delete. Okay, and then you hit OK, and you finish, next. Now, finish. Here's my data source. Now, to just to make sure that we got it right, you, if you click on the source, here is that username that is in the session, username. So it's looking for that field. Do I have a field in that username value in the session? If not, uh, we will not get anything in that query. Now, if I go back to the, uh, if we go back to the registration, if we go back to the profile page, now what can I do with this? Now, what you can do, your query is guaranteed that you're only getting that, that person. So what now you can do is that you can say here, for example, say uh, form, uh, you can do a detail view, for example. In my detail view, I will select uh, data source. Now here, I'm gonna only enable editing. 
get just to show you there is an, in the next video I'll show you how we customize it but now for now this is just editing now let's see what happens okay here is my data here is my record I have my edit now if I run it It will send me to the login page because I'm not logged in. But let's say ABC, I think one, two, three. You do log in. If I click on profile, notice that I am in the profile page. Okay, I'm only looking at that user. I don't have next or anything like that. Now, if I edit, you can edit the values in here. Now, what, what I'm going to show you in the next part how we actually add validation to this template. Now, if you do, if you delete this and you do update. It still is updated, but we don't want to do that, right? We want to actually do some updates. We want to do some protection. There's two ways to do validation. You can use validation using the controls that are available here, or you can do your custom validation. So I'm going to show you both ways. In the first one, I'll show you the easiest way, which is the, uh, using the validators available in the, uh, with Visual Studio. So when I click on update, I'm back to this, so I'm all right. Okay, so that's how you do edit profiles. All right, so you simply create the, what we did. If you, you just simply in the page, we created a data source. We configure the data source in a way so it gets the value from the session. We had a where clause in the query. After that, things become easy. All you need to do is that you add a data, you add a, a data set here, uh, sorry, a detail view here. You configure it with this data set, and then you enable only editing. Uh, and the next part, I'm gonna show you how you actually validate some of these data. For example, if you wanna be able to edit profile on some of these fields, for example, you wanna make sure that the email cannot be blank. So what you can do, or the password cannot be blank. What you can do, you can actually say, edit fields, you see that? Now, let's say this is the field that I want to be able to validate. What you do is that you say, convert this field into a template field. So you click on a template field, now it becomes a template field. If you want more, you can do the same thing. The phone, you wanna make it also, you can convert it to a template field. Now what happens, why did I do that? If you look in here now, you edit the template, you'll notice now if you have edit edit template, edit item template. Now, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Notice, now I have the fields. I can add validation to these fields. And then you can select what field you wanna work with. So this is field one, field two, this is field three, user phone. So these are different fields in your template. They have an index number. So this is my first field, field password, which is index two, and then the next one is user phone. Those are my fields that I selected to convert to template. You can add more. So now next what you need to do is that you actually can add validation and tie it to this one. So there is, for example, uh, you, I have a video on validation. You can go back and watch that video on validation regarding how to validate, the, to use these controls. But let's say if I wanna use only uh, required, uh, just for now, field validator. I simply drag it in here, and then I can do what with this guy? I can actually, uh, if I look at the property, you can tell it two things. First of all, I wanted to, the message that I wanted to say, say password cannot be blank. And you can actually change the color to make it looks red. Hit OK. And what you can do also in here, tell it what control you want it to validate. So here you say control to validate. I have only one control here, so which is text box one, all right? So that's how, it, how you can add validation to the template. Now one more thing before you do that, you need to add, to enable jQuery validation, you need to add you go to the web config and you need to add the following line, uh, the following lines in here in the setting. You need to add this key, validating setting, um, this the key value and then value none, all right? 
So make sure that you add this in your web config. Otherwise, you will get that error, and it's very hard to understand what that error is, all right? So now, let me see what, show you what happens. So if I run this, and I click on the profile, it will give me actually, I have to log in, A, B, C, one, two, three, and hit log in. Now if I click on the profile again, notice, if I click on edit, here is my value. Now remember I added validation here. If I remove this and I do update, password cannot be blank. And I cannot update it. So now if I cancel, you go back in here, you can, it's still the same, all right? So that's how you add validation. You can do the same thing with all these other fields, just the same way. You convert the template, you convert it from a template, you edit the template, you add the validation to it, and then you're done, all right? Now that is the easy way to do validation. Now if you wanna do more advanced stuff, which is how you trap the updates before it's, if the, the update is happening, I'll show you how we do that in the next video, all right? Hopefully you find this helpful in your website.